Well, today Paul finally comes out with it as he is trying to defend his uh, authority and apostleship. He finally comes out and says, okay, fine. You want to know? Yeah. I'll tell you. He's been hinting at this for a while, and finally he's (laughs) just going to drop it all on us in these 15 verses. So uh, he's Chris, and I'm Jeff, and we're the Bible Guys. Well, we are supposed to do a draft because uh, our listeners are only Super Bowl. only just very, very close. Yes, that's right. To the Super Bowl. And so we are filming this uh, just to be candid. Uh, this is this is way back in December. So today is December 29th. We're filming. this. That's right. That's right. So it's not even the first of the year. Uh, however, our listeners are going to be listening to this sometime like end of January. So keep in mind that if we make this prediction, <laughs> we are weeks behind. Yeah, 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 I yeah. feel like we had to say that. Th- th- no, I don't think so. I think that you've already got some clinched teams. So just just be just be you know courageous. Yeah, but we're supposed to draft who we think is going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's okay. So we may draft somebody who's out. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the whole idea behind a draft. Not everything's guaranteed in a draft. Right, but what I'm saying is, I don't want anybody, I don't Millen. want I don't want anybody at the end of January to think, okay, uh, aren't they aren't they goofy? Don't they know the record? Oh uh, well. So so anyway, so I'll, stick with clinched teams. Then you know they're in the playoffs at least. All right, well let's do our draft. We're going to do okay. three teams each. Okay. And we're going to do rock paper scissors. Rock Just, paper we're scissors. Do ready? One two three shoot. Ready? Right. One, one two, two three, three shoot. shoot. Oh, that's okay. me first. So he gets it. I had I had scissors. He had rock. Yes. So I'm going to go with the Eagles. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Good, because that left the team that's going to win the Super Bowl. That's the Bills. You think so? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And then and then my next draft on my team is the Minnesota Vikings. Really? Yes. I, so I'm going to choose exactly the opposite. I think that the 49ers are going to knock off the Vikings. You think so? I do. Yeah. I just, I don't think the, I think the Vikings are fraudulent team. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, yeah. Don, your friend Don Cousins isn't going to be happy about that prediction. Well, I didn't say his son was. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's your turn. And then I, I'm going to go with, oh, I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Oh, see, I don't like the Chiefs either. I'm done. I'm done with the Chiefs. Yeah. The Chiefs need to be done. Okay. Uh, so what are we at now? Is this my third pick? Yeah, it's your third pick. It's my third pick. I think I, I, think I know you're going to pick. Oh, boy. Um. The Lions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? So, so wait, by the way, I can almost guarantee that's that, not going to happen. No, no. What I'm saying is, by the time people listen to this, they're Sorry. like, they're like, they're like, dude, they're out. They're out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Right. <laughs> yep. By no. the way, wouldn't it be funny if, if at the end of January we're talking about this in December and they're they're in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that right? Drinking the blue Kool Aid. You never know. So. I, well, I do know. I know for sure that's not going to happen. <laughs> I was just did it to be funny. Yeah, well, the ones to watch, the, the fun uh, uh, AFC would be the Lions to watch, and then the mm-hmm. um, the Cowboys I think would be fun mm-hmm. to watch. So I think, I think the Bengals have a legit shot, to, yeah. to be honest with you. I, I, I really do. Yeah, but, that, that's uh, who I thought you were going to choose. Yeah, that's what I – okay, yeah. anyways. And I think another fun to watch in the NFC would be the Dolphins, mm. right? That was a really interesting game. Yes. Uh, just recently, yeah. and then um, Jags. I think Jags. So uh, football is always fun, and especially you know once you get to a playoff situation, it's like a whole new season, and uh, so you know it's a one and done kind of a thing, and um, you know it, th- those things are fun to do, fun to pay attention to. Yeah, and uh, I usually like the grilling, and the, and all the hors d'oeuvres and snacks hey, cent- centered around the Super Bowl. Hey, it's because we mentioned this in a service in the fall kickoff. I want to let everybody know that currently right now, uh, being December, uh, we have one more week left in my fantasy football league. Oh, uh-huh. uh, for, and I'm actually in the championship for the Super Bowl. And so am I. And, and that's in my league and your league. Yeah, now, yeah. The funny thing is I'm in your league. Yes. The other, it's the church league. Yeah. The good league. The, 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 the league that's really hard to win at is the, is the league that you're... Uh... No, no, no. Hey, there's a, I'm in a 12-team league in the other league. Yeah, you're in a 12-team league in this league. Uh, what I'm saying is they're both legit. Uh-huh. So sure. You know what the only difference is? Mm-hmm. The other league that I'm in is a $500 cash prize. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. So if yeah. I win, it's a $500 cash prize. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I'm really super hoping. And 
I have one more week to go, and I'm 45 points ahead. The Heritage, the Heritage uh, League, you get a Super Bowl trophy and a diamond ring. It's a fake diamond ring, but yeah. a great big giant Super Bowl yeah, ring. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. actually looks fun and legit. It's, it's, it's funny. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'll probably win that this week, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least I'm not. At least I'm not last in that league. All right. So the things we we the diversions that we uh, distract ourselves with, right? Yes. It's fun. Um, it, mostly what it does in the office is it just creates a lot of trash talk. Right. Everybody walking around harassing each other and, uh, you know, making me feel like I probably need to fire a few of these people. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as as Chris said at the beginning, um, this is where, and we've talked about it, we kind of set the table a few times. Hey, Paul's going to start bragging about his his record and he's going to start bragging about his, you know, the, his achievements, those kinds of things. So if you notice... Through this whole book, he talks for a minute about false teachers, and then he talks about his track record, and then he talks about a couple of things that the, they need to correct, and then he goes back to his track record and false teachers. He kind of does it. It's it's almost like his his style of talking to the Corinthians is to give you a little bit, and then to back off and change the subject for a minute, and then to give you a little bit of that, and then back off and change the subject for a minute, instead of just pounding them over and over and over from start to finish and proving that he won. It's like, you know, I'm going to give you some bad news, but then go ahead and digest that while I talk about something else. And then I'm going to give you some bad news and digest that while I talk about something else. That's kind of what he, what he's doing here. So now finally, this is where he drops the bomb and he goes, come on. These super apostles, as we were talking about yesterday, they're in here. They're willing to collect money from you. They're willing to have prestige among you, but they haven't paid any of the price. So if they want to brag about their achievements, let me tell you about my achievements. Right. Right. And so it was he he's frustrated with the whole thing. He's embarrassed that he's doing it, but he feels right. that he feels it's necessary. Yep. So here we go. In uh, verse uh, 16 in chapter 11, he says, again, I say, I don't think I'm a fool to talk like this. But even if you do listen to me as you would to a foolish person while I boast a little. Such boasting is not from the Lord, but I'm acting like a fool. And since others boast about their human achievements, I will too. After all, you think you're so wise, but you enjoy putting up with fools. You put up with it even uh, when someone enslaves you, takes everything you have, takes advantage of you, takes control of everything, and slaps you in the face. I'm ashamed to say that we've been too weak to do that. But whatever they dare to boast about, I'm talking like a fool again. I dare to boast about it too. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I've served him far more. I've worked harder, been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number, faced death again and again. Five different times, the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I've traveled on many long journeys. I've faced danger from rivers and from robbers, and I've faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I've faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I've faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I've worked hard and long and during many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty, have often gone without food. I've shivered in the cold without even enough clothes to keep me warm. Then, besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. Who's weak without my feeling that weakness? Who is led astray, and I do not burn with anger? If I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, who is worthy of eternal praise, knows I'm not lying. When I was in Damascus, the governor under King Aretas kept guards at the city gates to catch me. I had to be lowered in a basket through a window in the city wall to escape from him. <laughs> there it is. So there's, uh, once again, you know, Paul has this way of uh, throwing down the supreme example. And, uh, you know, he's certainly qualified to do so. If there was anybody who was, you know, uh, you know, who set the prime example, it would be Paul. Yeah. And, uh, and you know what, he, he doesn't boast, uh, you know, you can hear his hesitancy. He says, Hey, uh, he's, you know, he says, I know this sounds foolish. He goes, I, it really, what he's saying is this, I view anyone who does this as foolish, right? But you're no strangers to, to listening to fools, right? <laughs> right? In fact, you've let other fools come in yeah. and they, they basically take you for everything you have and then they'll slap you and you'll say, thank you for it. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> so he says, if you're going to listen uh, to them that way, then, Hey, listen to me this way. Right. Because, you know, I'm going to talk like a foolish and a madman. Right. 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 But I'm going to, I'm going to lay it down for you because, you know, nobody has the you know right to brag like I do. Yeah. It's just a tactic. 
Yeah. Right. That, that, that's what he's doing here. So fine. This is what they do to you all the time. If that's all you listen to. Right. And if that's all you need, listen to my resume on this one. Right. If you're just looking for how impressive somebody's life is, okay, let me drop this one on you because there's nobody that has put up with what I've had to put up with. Um, so my life application study Bible notes uh, have an interesting thing here. It says, because Paul wrote this letter during his third missionary journey <clears throat> in Acts 18 through 21, his, <clears throat> excuse me, his trials were not over. He would experience yet further difficulties and humiliations for the cause of Christ. And then it says, see Acts 21, which we'll eventually get to uh, Acts 22. Paul was sacrificing his life, life for the good news, something his false teachers would never do. The trials and hurts we experience for Christ's uh, sake build our character, demonstrate our faith, and prepare us for further service for the Lord. Mm. I think it's interesting how uh, it pointed out and, and that we're about to see that Paul's trials weren't over. He was in the midst of it. Right. Right. And and and, and by the way, we don't really know when we're in the midst of it. We don't know when it's going to end Paul lists everything, and we perceive it as something that's all in the past. Yeah. But he's in the grind of it right now. It's almost incomprehensible to us in, in our culture. You know, uh, we wake up in the morning and go on a Sunday, gee, do we want to go to church today? There's so many other things. I don't feel like it. I'm sleepy. It's cold outside, whatever. <laughs> and and so, you know, we we don't think of if I go to with the, be with the other Christians, I might be stoned to death. Or I might get arrested or right. I might be attacked. If I share my faith at work, um, you know, today, somebody might think, oh, you know, I might have a coworker who uh, looks at me sideways or uh, I might get passed over for a, a promotion or, uh, you know, I might get called into HR. But we're not thinking I just might get, you know, beat to death Yeah. on this. Right. You know, um, I, I uh, do you remember the Columbine shooting? Yeah. Yeah. So the Columbine shooting, goodness, it was like, what, mid-90s? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. terrible. So we were both youth pastors at the time. Yes, I was. So uh, I was a high school <clears throat> pastor of a bunch of students, and we went up to this camp. And uh, uh, that was one of the first sort of mainstream shootings because, you know, unfortunately, there have been many, right? Mm. Which is ugh, just, right. just right. a terrible topic. It's terrible. But anyway, in this particular case, the, the guys, the two guys doing the shooting were somehow interested in people who believed in God. And there was a girl named Cassie Bernal, and Cassie Bernal's father wrote a book called She Said Yes, mm. and he was our guest speaker at this camp. Oh, wow. And then they actually loaded from Denver uh, the 12 crosses that were actually at the funeral with all the notes from all the other students that were still on the crosses. Mm. And so we had 1,500 students from, from, you know, from Georgia and from Ohio and from all around the Mideast, you know, Midwest, who actually... Um, uh, we were able to just sort of walk and, 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 and read all the notes. It was very heavy, very somber. Mm -hmm. And then Cassie Bernal's father spoke. And uh, the entire book was based on this fact. And this is sort of the point of the story where they were, they were in the library and they were uh, looking, they were pointing the guns at people and saying, do you believe in God? And, and the kids, depending on their answer, they would get shot. Mm -hmm. And then they found Cassie under a desk knowing, yeah. knowing that if she said yes, she would get shot. Right. And, and, and they said, do you believe in God? And she paused well, she and yes. she said, yes. Yeah. And then they, they shot her, yeah. killed, killed yeah. her. And so it, it's just, it's just this idea of like, uh, you and I have absolutely no idea, uh, how we would respond in that situation. Yeah. Right. And we hope we would be the person who says yes. Right. And none of us, you know, face, uh, you know, our, we don't have to, uh, measure our faith, you know, up against situations like that. But Paul did. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, this is kind of the paradox of faith, and this is a, uh, one of the paradoxes of of uh, having an eternal view, which is a big part of the challenge of Second Corinthians, is to look into, you know, look to eternity, not just to these temporal things. And for her, in that moment, she said yes, and was immediately standing before the one she chose. That's right. 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 So for us, what a loss! What a shame! This is a horrible thing, and it is. It's a tragedy. There, I'm not minimizing that at all. For her, it was yes. And immediately standing in the truth of what she claimed she believed right in that moment and and so um, the more you be convinced become convinced of eternity the less afraid you are of entering it mm -hmm. right and and so sure there's terror all those things just just like Paul said in the previous chapter yeah I've been afraid but 
man, it's worth it. So then he gives you this laundry list of all the times that, you know, I was afraid and these are the things that happen. Yeah. Um, you know, G- God's goal for us is not to protect us from every single problem. God's goal is for us to become more and more like Jesus and to be effective on the mission he has us on until the day he decides to, to reward us and promote us by taking us to heaven. And in that day, uh, it'll all make sense and it'll all be worth it. I think of the, you know, I've, I've talked about this a lot on the podcast, the different people that uh, I've met around the world, you know, through the Timothy Initiative as we start churches. Um, I heard a story just recently, a guy in uh, Vietnam that uh, they had come and told him, you're not allowed to plant churches. And it was, it was people in the village. This isn't government stuff. This is just people in the village who were angry that this guy is sharing the gospel and they threatened him a few times. Finally, they began to chase him. They chased him down. And um, uh, he's running as fast as he can, trying to get away. And uh, they, they just slashed him from top of his face to the bottom like this and cut him up and beat him up and left him for dead. And then they went and got his mother and his sister and tied them up, threatened to kill them. He wound up getting some help, and they wound up setting his mother and sister free. But he came away going, what am I doing that even my mother and my sister are threatened by the work? that, that uh, And he said, all I can do is trust that God will take care of us and protect my, my mother and my sister. I can't stop telling people about Jesus. And I think, man alive, I, do I have that kind of guts? Do I have that courage? Because in his mind, who else is going to say anything? It's, yeah. in, it's in a community where there's no other Christians. So the only way to get the gospel to these people is to go through the suffering in order to reach the people that are necessary. And it, that has been the story of Christianity for 2,000 years. We have the extreme luxury of living in a country that has religious freedom. Mm -hmm. It's it's, it's beyond comprehension how how incredible this luxury of religious freedom is, but it also tends to make soft Christians a little bit. And so I think that we have to choose to be strong. Uh, Otherwise, we will be, you know, we will just naturally uh, become weak. But around the world, even today, there's tens of thousands of people who struggle and suffer because of the gospel. And, um, you know, God is good in the middle of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I heard similar stories in Cuba, you know, back mm-hmm. when, back when persecution yeah. was really high and, yeah. and, uh, yeah, it's amazing. And you go and you interview these people, you meet with these people and, uh, you know, which of course, you know, you and I have the privilege of doing sure. because of our, because of our job. Right. Right. But you know, you, you, you meet those people and you're like, you're like, man, I'm a, I'm a piece of garbage. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what it makes you feel like. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I'm not sure that I'm, uh, you know, really as strong as I think I am yeah. because I don't have to face any of these things. Well, they, they inspire me. They, so on one side, I feel like I'm not worthy to carry their bags. Right. You know what I mean? On the other side, I'm like, I want to be right. Right. So uh, I, I don't feel like I'm garbage and I'm never going to measure up when I see somebody like that, they become my heroes. And I'm like, I want to be like that. Right. I, I, I want to believe now God's never put me in a position where, uh, you know, if I say yes, I'm going to die kind of situation yet. <laughs> But I want to believe that I will say yes. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I think it's possible is because others can. Others do. And so for 2,000 years, when we see see Paul and he tells about his his crises and his struggles, uh, he went through them. And he went through them with dignity. He's even embarrassed to talk about them because the work was more important. That's what he's trying to say through this whole thing is the work being done among you is far more important than me bragging about my struggles. Mm. That that, that's this whole passage if you if you if you're thinking about the big picture. Um, And so. They went through it, and then if they can go through it, we can too. And if it was worth it, thank God he did, because the gospel might not have made it to you and me. Right, right. right? Thank God that the people in the, you know, 500 years ago went through the struggles that they went through, or that the people who went through the struggles before the generation before you became a Christian, thank God that they did, because the gospel made it to us. And now it's our responsibility to carry it with faithfulness. And if God was good to them and carried them through the struggles, He'll be good to us and carry us through. Even though there's a little bit of fear, even though we're not very good at it, he's going to do, he's going to do the work in us. And that's the big picture of these three, four chapters. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting that you said, you're like, oh, I don't feel like garbage. Uh, you know, and then you said, you know, it inspires you and you yeah, want to yeah. be like them. Yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking about, it, you said that and I thought, I, 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 I I feel like garbage all the time. <laughs> like, like I, I, like when I, when I, well, I have self-assurance in the strengths finders thing. Yeah, I have yeah, self-assurance. Yeah. So I never feel like garbage. <laughs> uh, I'm just like, like for instance, when I mean, I remember being in the hotel, like when I was in Cuba, we talked to this guy and he's, you know, sharing Christ and the government calls and threatens his daughters. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh-huh. And I go back to the hotel and I'm like, I remember one time being in Buffalo wild wings 
And I felt like God was saying, pray with this guy. And like, I almost didn't, right? I ended mm-hmm. up doing it, right? Mm-hmm. But there are times where I don't do those things. Sure, sure. Where God says, hey, uh, bring up bring up God in this mm-hmm. conversation. And I'm afraid, to, I'm afraid to do that. There are times where I quite literally brush God off. Sure. If I, cause I'm trying to justify it. Like, is this really from God or is this something that maybe, you know, like maybe it's too yeah. much, too much spicy pizza. Well, you know, I think this is a, it's a spiritual muscle. Right. I really do. The, the reason why it's easy to not do it. Uh, the reason why you feel like, oh man, I, I feel like a bum cause I can't lift this heavy weight. If Arnold Schwarzenegger at his peak, when he, back when he's Mr. Olympia or whatever, Mr you know, universe, Mr. Everything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, that dude could walk up and pick up, you know, weights that you and I couldn't pick up with both hands. He could pick up with his little finger back then. Right. Right. Well, that doesn't mean I'm garbage because he can, and I can't, it's that he did the work to get there and I didn't. Right. So now he had some genetic advantages and all those kinds of things, some certain gifts. But if I would buckle down and over the next six months or the next year, if I'd work hard, I bet you I could lift 50 pounds more than I can lift now. Yeah. And so I think it's the same thing, spiritual courage and spiritual effectiveness. It's like a spiritual muscle. You have to work it. So when, when you were challenged to speak to that guy or to pray for that guy in, in Buffalo Wild Wings, yeah. just do it. You do it. Now you lifted that weight. It's like working out today. And oh, you, do, you do that often yeah. enough. And eventually you will be ready for, for the heavy persecution. It's, so the people who succeed at it are the ones who do, do the consistent work. The reason why Paul was so strong was because he had so many. He, he just gave us a whole list of all the big workouts he did. Yeah, you're right. You do have self-assurance Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I get it. You're the, you're the, you're the coach. You're the guy, you're like Chris May, right? <laughs> Chris May's like, you can do it. I'm he, like, he's our trainer. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But, but I'm like, yeah, I get it. But I'm, I'm, I'm referring to all the past failures when I didn't get him to go to yeah, the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, you're right. It is, it is. I have positivity too. I, yeah, think, it, I think, oh, we can do that. Yeah. Well, everything you're saying is correct. Yeah. Like I, I realize that it's all potential. It's all uh, you know, practical. It's, it's all of those things too. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. This is why he gives it to us is, Hey, I went through it. You can go through it. You can make it. Yeah. I think for that's sure. why, why God gave us these lists. And, and by the way, let's just not brush past the fact that he says five different times, <laughs> the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Mm. I mean, you know, 40 lashes was illegal yeah. because 40 lashes was considered lethal. Right. Right. So ju- just in case our listeners, you know, don't know this. So Jesus was actually given 39 lashes. Right. Right. And, 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 uh, right before, you know, on good Friday when he, when he was, you know, taken to the cross and they said when he was done, he didn't look like a human. Right. Right. And so here's Paul saying, uh, wait a minute, that happened to me five times. Yeah. And that's only <laughs> one of like 15 things that Paul mentions. Just one of those, one of yeah. those five alone yeah. would have been like, are you kidding me? Three times you were shipwrecked. Right. You know, right. I, I have a friend, his name's Cujo. He he survived a, a jet crash in the Democratic Republic of well, Congo. Because his name's Cujo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cujo means boy more, born on Monday, by the way, which is funny. But um, that's an amazing story. He survived a jet a, 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 a crash, a jet crash, wow. um, uh, while he was going to preach. But Paul says, yeah, I was in three shipwrecks. And actually, I floated around in the water for a day and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Right? It's just incredible. Incredible. Yeah. So um, so Paul is, you know, basically dropped the hammer on this and then he's going to move on and he's going to, you know, pick up tomorrow uh, talking about the thorn in the flesh, which is also yeah. a, a common phrase in church world. Yeah. But we're going to find out what that means. Yeah. I think this is the, this chapter 12 is going to be super relevant for a lot of people. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we will hopefully see you then on the Bible Guys.